hello, 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 and welcome to the show at Wrestling With Entertainment, the only audio experience on the web today. The trusted choice for them to read all your favorite wrestlers every Tuesday and Wednesday, previewing and reviewing the latest shows from WWE, AW, New Japan, everything in between every Saturday on YouTube and CastBox, sponsored by Rogue Energy and Player One Coffee. I'm, of course, your host, James J. Alongside the leader of Squaw Squad, Kaliko Yachts. What it do, what it do, what it do, baby. And it's a great day for wrestling because we are wrestling with WWE Elimination Chamber 2017, the Elimination Chamber match for the WWE Championship. It took place uh, February 12, 2017 in Phoenix, Arizona at the Talking Stick Resort Arena. Uh, attendance was 11,000. Um, kind of late on, you know, the um, Elimination Chamber boat. Um, but maybe a little bit on topic because of the match that we're going to be uh, watching tonight. No? Yes, about right. I mean, it's all getting there. WrestleMania 40, some uh, notable Hall of Fame entrants um, that are linked to this individual in the match, but sometimes better late than never. Now, um, if you want to watch along with us, um, pull out your beta matches, your VHSs, your DVDs, Fire up your network, pull out your peacocks, Netflix, and chill with us. Um, more accurately, you have to go to Peacock to watch this match with us. Um, it's unavoidable. Um, you want to go 2 hours, 8 minutes, and 29 seconds into the video. Once you're there, I will count you down 3 Two, one. When I say one, press play. Are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Three, two, one. And here we go. Elimination Chamber match for the WWE Championship. Um, obviously, WrestleMania. 32, 32? No, 33 implications. 33, Orlando. Major implications in this match. Now, um, I'm not necessarily a big fan of this chamber design, if I'm being completely honest. I think I've said that on uh, all preview shows uh, time and time again. Mm-hmm. And here we have uh, Mr. Bleeds a lot that will not be bleeding in this match. Yeah, crazy. He was the IC champion going into... It, it's 20, 2017 was very, very intriguing to say the least because it was just like AJ was there. He kind of just lost the title to Cena. Um, Ambrose becomes the IC champion. Trying to figure out where he's going to go. Corbin is the new star. Uh, it, was, it was weird. I mean, I was at this show. Fun fact. I was at this show. Drove five hours there and back to come see this guy. <laughs> so 10 hours of driving with a homeboy of mine. We grow all the way in there, got the goddamn free ticket as veterans and hit the, was high-fiving Jesus, but we, the show was still great nonetheless. That's all that really matters in the end. Remember this I mean, that... entrance from Baron Corbin? This is when everybody kind of liked them. 
He had Hill. Kind of a somewhat homecoming. He played uh, NFL for the Cardinals a bit and the Packers. Hmm. So, I mean, a little bit of a homecoming. But I mean, I remember when he, I don't know what happened with Corbin. It was like everybody was on him, then they were like, fuck him. And it's just like, <laughs> it, it just was, it, it, the turn was so quick. He never necessarily. Am I the only one that missed that boat? In my opinion, he never really had it to begin with. I mean, he had it. Come on. He had it. I mean, we're having the same discussion about uh, Austin Theory now that we we had about him in, you know, 2017. Uh, no, who didn't have it was the announcer, sir. Um, yeah, you're not wrong about that. No, well, I did watch this show. I did, I, I did watch paid previews at this time. I wasn't necessarily invested in WWE at this time. Um, between 2016 and to 2019, I kind of dipped out for a while. I wasn't watching week to week. In my opinion, mm-hmm. this was the, the worst stretch of pro wrestling in my era of watching pro wrestling. Mm. I mean, it could have been worse. What do you mean by worse? It truly. <laughs> I mean, this was what right around when when Taker got ta- this was before Roman Taker was official. Um, this was the hottest storyline, which was the Wyatt family right. portion, because the Mont Orton had just won the Rumble, and he had. One, he had joined the family, won the Rumble. Luke at this time was like trying to figure it out. Luke almost made um, it a triple threat, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it was kind of like, and to be quite honest, we weren't sure Bray was going to win. I mean, it easily could have been Cena Orton. Again. Again. So, <laughs> just saying. Oh, gosh, bro. Man. Uh. Killer entrance. And it was just, uh You know, it was crazy after the after this. Oh, you know, it's crazy. It's crazier after this show. When I when I went back, home, the house show was right back in San Diego, and, it, and uh, the main event of this was uh, Orton and Wyatt versus Cena and Harper tag match. Hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> One of the very few times that we saw. John Cena do house shows, which um, to me, because my son, he's a huge Cena fan, he's like, I never got to see Rick Cena wrestle. I'm like, bro, you've seen him wrestle more than you think you have. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I took him to the show. He was like a year old at the time. <clears throat> but, Man, but I guess yeah, I, haven't, I hadn't seen Cena as many times as I as I've seen Cena. I've seen her a lot. (laughs) 
Oh Lord, you and the joke. I mean, but I remember this, and it was just. Go ahead. No, I was saying for a guy that you that says you can't see him, I see him off of off a lot of time. I mean, we'd have seen him uh, uh, naked. Um, yeah, you're not wrong. But, uh, he blows it, and everybody's like, oh, shit. So this just goes to show that the first two is going to be uh, Styles versus Cena. Cena, <clears throat> which is funny. It was like... It's just crazy how, like, all the dots kind of connected because Bray feuded with Dean. Dean was kind of running with, I think at the time, Baron? What? AJ at this time. AJ at this time was top tier. And I think this was right before he started his shit with Shane. Right. And he went from the house, the house that AJ built to the face that run. He, this is the time he's the face that runs the place. Um, damn, AJ was, looked young back then. <laughs> <laughs> it was like five years ago. That's my point. He was shit. He probably was like forty-five. Looked like he was twenty-seven. <laughs> and then he jumps in. It's funny. I mean, that ain't that physique ain't there. And now I remember, yep, Dean versus. I remember. Oh yeah, this was right around the time you remember when 2016 when they had uh the Cena AJ. Ambrose triple threat to try to offset the debate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are y'all doing? It's funny how, you know, this would be essentially John Cena's last one as WWE champion. This was his 16th ch- time. It was, and it was very short lived. Like, very short-lived. Probably one of his shortest reigns ever. If not the shortest reign. But a little bit over 30 days? He had a few short ones. He hot potatoed the championship with, um, with Orton back in 20, uh, uh, 2009? Yeah, but this is the one to get the record. And I think this is when, because he was the, later to be the, what, the game, the cover? He was the cover of 17. And you had the, oh my God, I wish they brought that back. Where you used to get the deluxe edition and you would get like memorabilia and shit, which was so fucking awesome. And one of the memorabilia in this, because I still have it, was the actual mat that, John Cena won a piece of the ring match where he won the 6th championship. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. They need to bring those back. I'm getting tired of them fucking just digitally releasing games. Like, those were the shit, so I used to love... That was the only reason I got them. You used to get, like, the little cards, like, a couple NXT cards, some statues, a couple autos. Like, they had the one where it was, like, with the SmackDown, when they celebrated the SmackDown, and it was, uh, you got either autograph of Ray, Edge, or Angle. The only Edge autograph I've had. <laughs> Literally. is from the video game. That's crazy. So, WWE, if you're listening, bring that shit back, because those are fire. Anyways, as the match is about to start... <laughs> And this is Cena, AJ. Oh, my God. And they had just had that banger at the, at the Rumble. 
Yeah, they had. Which... 2017 was the, the year of Styles versus um, Cena. Uh... Which one I think 16, 16 I or 17. Because remember, SummerSlam 2016 Styles versus Cena. And Styles won. Right. And then this was Styles C. And then, of course, Royal Rumble, Styles loses. And then they never had a rubber. Mm. Good old 50 50 booking. No, 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 no. They, they wrestled um, Money in the Bay. And then SummerSlam. And then uh, Rumble. That was twenty all twenty seventeen. No, twenty sixteen, and then the rumble was. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, I was about this man. All right, what the fuck? As they go into the collar, collar and elbow tie up. Cena in his traditional jorts with the with the what the the blippy colors. I mean, these are unusually dark for him. Usually, you know, it's jean. I know. But the but the orange and blue is like, uh, if you have kids, everybody knows about Blippi. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. This Randall Air Force veteran who's doing education videos, and now he's making like 20 mil a year and shit. Sold his shit for like 200 mil. I'm like, God damn, I need that. <laughs> Why well, did not think of this shit? Just teaching kids how to read it. <laughs> Fuck, wrong money. But, I mean, when you're looking at this, it's like, it's a very eclectic group of people in this elimination chamber. Because when you think about it, there's you only have like three people who you thought were gonna win, and the rest were kind of filler. Think about right. I mean, we knew Ambrose wasn't winning. Definitely knew Corbin wasn't winning. And we damn sure knew Miz wasn't gonna pop it off. So. No. Like half the field was eliminated before you even got <laughs> to the cat, <laughs> which was bananas, right? So of course, in my usual scooter way, this was in Phoenix, Arizona, and I—I I mean, when you look at the matches that were on here, they had the. This is right before the Usos was kind of finding themselves. They were still on that uh, day one ish ish, and not you know go- going about it like that. So, all right. So this elimination chamber was held on February. No, no, there's no way. February 12th? Damn, that... I mean, honestly, that's hella early for... for <laughs> that is hella early for an elimination chamber. If I must say so myself. February 12th, 2017 at the Talking Stick Arena. All the matches included... <clears throat> Becky Lynch beating Mickey James, which I mean, Mickey still looked good. I ain't even gonna care. Um, and a two on one handicap match in which Apollo Cruz and Kalisto defeated Zolf Ziggler. And then the SmackDown Tag Team Title Turmoil match, because this is back before they merged all the belts together. American Alpha, you remember those guys? Um, Chad Gable and Jason Jordan Never heard of defeated them. defeated Brizongo. You heard of those guys? Uh, Slater and Rhino 
heard of those guys. The Ascension, heard of those guys. The Usos and the Vaud Villains. Now think about that. Everybody in that tag team match and the only people that are left still at that company is American Alpha and the Usos. Yep. And one of them is literally not even wrestling anymore. <laughs> one of those four are not wrestling anymore, which is bananas. All right, let's see who's going to pop out the pod. Who is it? I want to say it was Corbin. Oh, it was Ambrose. Oh, yeah. The triple threat. Why not? Bring back that triple threat. Oh, yeah. Because you remember when uh, Dean, oh, James Ellsworth. Remember that guy. <laughs> trying to forget him, honestly. Why? No, don't forget him. As Ambrose is running Cena through the cage and kicking the living dog shit out of him. Um, Natalia versus Nikki Bella. Double count out. Kind of feels like they cheated Natalia there. Um, which is weird because Natalia had the double count out. She goes on to win the title at SummerSlam. Told you, unsung hero. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> Randy Orton beats Luke Harper. Of course, you got to keep him strong because Luke was no longer in the group at this time, for context. The Wyatt family became a family of three, uh, considering that Luke uh, well, went from three to two. Oh, gosh. That, that hurt. That suplex was bananas. AJ, man. Jesus. Man. Anyways, in context, the for this story, the three became two, and it was just Orton, and basically it wasn't even a family. It was more like just two dudes chilling. Um, <clears throat> because uh, Roman was on uh, Raw, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, that was one part, but then, of course, Rowan was... No, Rowan was on SmackDown. Rowan had left. They kicked him out. Orton convinced Harper, or convinced Orton... Or uh, not Orton. Orton convinced Wyatt to kick him out. Because Luke was kind of like that guy that was like, I told you he couldn't be trusted type shit. Right. And... And as we see Dean Ambrose jump off the top of the pod, that's about the closest extreme you're going to see him in this match, folks. Uh, yep. No uh, no bleeding in this one. <laughs> and this is when he still was, you know, popping the hair off. So, I mean, just saying. I was just going to say that. You know, he, he looks good with hair. He's a lot less. At this time, too, he was a lot less. Bulky. Because I feel like an AW. Oh, to me, an AW it seems like he doesn't have that. He's more stiff, right? Right. Stiff, stock, and not in a bad way, but just more like stocky. Just because he's he's fucking grown girth. Um, <laughs> pause. Uh, pause. But. Anywho, uh, it, I mean, yeah, he, to me, he looked good with the hair. But I can bet your ass he was still kind of like, this is him coming off the Austin interview where he was like the champion and they didn't really like how he looked as champion. Then he had the SummerSlam match with uh, Ziggler. And that wasn't really impressive. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of moving parts for him. So I can see why he was probably not at his best psychologically. And with that being said, adding on to that match, Naomi had won her first WWE title this night against Alexa Bliss. But then she would drop it like a couple of weeks later on SmackDown. 
she would, only to win again at WrestleMania in her hometown. If that makes any sense. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I know why. Because you remember back then when they had injuries, they took the shit serious. It was like, fuck it, drop the title. <laughs> it, was like, it was like, drop the title. We don't want to deal with this shit, right? Right. And then they were like, oh, it ain't that bad? All right, take your ass back out there. Go ahead, win, girl. <laughs> so Funny that's enough, exactly... Funny enough, I was actually at that so that she dropped the title. She she dropped the title where it was it um, NorCal? It was um uh what's it called? Um it wasn't Anaheim, not Staples Center. Um Citizens Bank oh? Arena. Citizens Bank Oh um motherfucking goddamn I can't think of the name of it. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about though. Uh, Citizens Bank Arena. It's inland. Uh, fuck. I'm trying to think of it. Uh, oh, I can't remember. Ontario? Yes, that is correct. No, Ontario. Oh, now it's called the Toyota Arena. Yeah. That's why. Got it. Makes sense. So you were at that show. I was at the house show. Yeah. That was before I was like, yeah, I'm just going to start traveling. <laughs> like yeah, I'll travel. Ah, uh, sure, sure. Travel to where you are, WWE. Fuck yeah, why wouldn't I? So, as you yeah, that's me. Good old dumbass. Good old dumb. <laughs> Good old dumb. I mean, no, actually, this was when I started traveling. Like shit, ten hours Arizona and back. Yeah, why not? I'd rather. Now I'm smart. I'm like fucking spend the night. I keep forgetting that you're a lot further away than I am to these places. Well, I mean, Phoenix to Phoenix to for those who are in Dago traveling this shit, Phoenix to Dago is like five hours. So that's not bad. It's just when you drive back and you go through that stupid desert. Um... But this was before I discovered a thing called the train, and I could just <laughs> catch the train <laughs> as Bray Wyatt comes in. And they had a potential nice view that kind of went to shit once Dean Ambrose brought Mitch the plant. Mm. Yep. Was it Mitch the plant? And then they had at the part where he tried to yank the camera TV and it shocked them in the face. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of shit there. That was, this was, that was after, uh, pre, prior to this happening. That was 2015, I'd like to see. That's what I'm saying. So I'm saying, like, they, the history was there. Right. Because look, because this is when Dean Ambrose, aka finding himself, and then became Cool Hand Dean. And if I remember right, when he won the title, he was actually at a house show in Dago. See, it was funny. It was a lot of goddamn shows in Dago during this time. And now all of a sudden, we be redhead stepchildren now. More or less. How many minutes are you into this? I am. Right when AJ got tossed. <laughs> okay. Well, so, so there's four bodies in the four bodies in the ring. Three of them are the favorites, and this is where I think I remember right. Corbin came out. See, I keep yelling Corbin. I can't remember. But, or I just couldn't see because at the time I was high fiving Jesus. There we go. Baron Corbin. <laughs> see, and they had their thing. So that was 
the thing. It, it was supposed to make him look strong fighting for the IC title. But now he's an NXT tag champion with uh, Baron Corbin. I mean, not Baron well, Corbin, but with uh, Ron Breaker. So, I mean... I didn't expect this. I, it's been a long time since... I haven't seen this match since it actually happened. Uh, I don't remember it being, you know, so aerialistic. Um, AJ and Cena really, you know, went all out, to say the least. I mean, because Cena knew he was losing. That's why. So that, I mean, I would go out all that too, shit. Just saying. No, um, I did, you know, um, I don't want to say long-haired Dean Ambrose, but, you know, actually has hair Dean Ambrose. And I mean this as, like, no, like, shades, shade on, um, mocks, but he looks like he's a recovering addict. <laughs> I mean, I think at that point he was, I told you, he was, he was an IC champion, but you keep in mind, this is probably when he was like, I'm not really wanting to come and show up and, you know what I mean? Right. Now, keep in mind that later this year, Jinder Mahal would be your WWE champion. Motherfucker, you are not lying. <laughs> Cause, uh, and this was actually when Shinsuke Nakamura makes his debut this year, that year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the night, uh, not the night after WrestleMania, but uh, the SmackDown after WrestleMania. Yeah. Dude, it was a fucking problem. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't that the, um, the SummerSlam that Cena beat Corbin in the, in the opener? Yes. But I think this is where Corbin won the beef case. And and it got uh he won the briefcase and I think Cena ch- made him choke. That's right, because he cashed who did he cash in on? Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal, yep. See? We can all, we can all watch one of those Jinder Mahal title ring matches. <laughs> we might have to. If only there was an Indian history month. Uh Native American history month, sir. Not the same thing? Indians in quote, quote. Don't quote my word for it. Don't take my word for it. I'm sorry, people. Y'all know I love you. <laughs> Please don't cancel me. See? There we go. I have to admit, there was some pretty good bumps in this match. It was, and people just, you know, act like it's just, you know. But this is when Miz is like, hell no. <laughs> How often does um yeah. all six competitors of the Elimination Chamber make it to the end of the Chamber? I mean, I feel like that's usually common. Not as common as you would expect. It usually one person gets eliminated beforehand. Oh, and there you go. Was it cool? But K 
can we just admire the voice of Mauro Ronaldo? Oh. oh my God. Cause this was the short time the Mauro was there. Yeah. But Jesus, he was cooking. He was always cooking. I mean, I used to send him tweets like I w I was I would see wait, I see? You said I wasn't active, I was active. I would say, bro, I would buy a CD of you just, like, quoting hip-hop lyrics. <laughs> like, literally. literally. I mean, I can literally buy- 2017. It's not even Twitter anymore. That's my point, sir. Just, We're in Corbin, so that's something up with Dean, clearly. Of course. <clears throat> and Dean's too fucked up now. And now... I mean, who actually... And the Miz is, Miz is gonna try to do it. it, it oh. I was gonna Always say, happen. who actually remembers Dean Ambrose versus John Corbin? Um, not many people would because it was actually on the preset. It wasn't, you know, on the main card. Who? Baron Corbin versus Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship. That's my point. So think about that. Dean Ambrose going from fucking main event in SummerSlam or one of the main events in SummerSlam to pre-show Intercontinental Championship. Yep. And this was at the time, remember? Oh, yeah. And this is what Miz was kind of cooking. That's right. Because uh, remember, he was talking shit about Daniel Bryan. Because this is the time Daniel Bryan was still up there, right? And the talking smack. No. Renee. This was, was afterwards. Um... No, that's what I'm saying. Like, when he kind of had the whole talking shit. And... Right. Probably the best promo of his life. <laughs> Literally. Well, uh, The Miz would go on to wrestle John Cena at WrestleMania with Maurice and Nikki Bella, where John Cena yes. proposed to Nikki Bella. Um, talk about something that aged well. Yeah, because John Cena's now married. Je I told you in 2017, John Cena would be married, but not to Nikki Bella. You'd be like, you smoking crack. No, I, I could have told you that was coming. <laughs> I could have definitely told you that was coming. What? You know. I doubt that, sir. And then he goes, e look at, and this is when, you know. But 2017, man, this is, now when you think about it, goes from Bray to Orton to Mahal to AJ. And AJ would hold it for what, like what, a year? Damn near, and... And then, uh, what, AJ? Who beat AJ? Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan, Kofi Kingston, Brock Lesnar. Uh, damn, yeah. It, it went crazy. Brock Lesnar. Didn't it go, no, Seth was already champion. Who beat Lesnar? McIntyre. After, after Kofi McIntyre, yeah. McIntyre, Orton, um, McIntyre, Lashley, no, yeah, McIntyre, Miz, Lashley, um, 
after Lashley, Lesnar, Roman, and then the rest is history. Jesus, I, I this brain still got it, baby. <laughs> but there they go. They both hate Cena. Duck, they do. And as much as I hate that, um, as much as I loved that Bray won, or I just hated that this shit should have been. This is a year, what, two years in the making? Um, when did they... Cause, no, three years. Because remember, he lost his way after 30. This is when I called it the John Cena effect. Because right. motherfuckers used to be hot from like 30 to 32. Motherfuckers was, well, what? No, 30 and 31, John Cena literally killed like two future stars. Well, I mean, Bray did bounce back, I would say, but, you know. But it took a whole three years to bounce back, and it, and that was with, and that was with a semi-cult following, because you can make that argument that people were rocking with him regardless. Right. But I feel like that's, and we talked One, about this on the Bray Wyatt. two. Tribute so. Bray always kind of had those hot and cold moments where, in his rivalries, where he was really hot, hot, hot. It would get to the blow off, or it didn't get to the blow off, and it just would be stone cold. So there well, was, you know, those peaks and downs. But the peak, it, but it initiated with. Because. To me, he should have beat Cena at 30. Yeah. If you were going to have him take him sit, Because here was my thing. If you were going to have this thing where Cena was going to have, like, this slow-ass build-off into the sunset, it should have been, like, a five-, six-year thing in the making. Like, he could have won, like, every other match except those major matches. <coughs> Two... And out, and as AJ kicks out, and they're doing their transition, this is good stuff right here. And but and to me, Bray wasn't the same after that, and Rusev wasn't the same after that. Well, now, Bray had to fight and claw his way back, but keep in mind, he even with if this incarnation of Bray. It was short lived because he got the belt and lost it in 30 days. Yeah, a month later. Well, not a month later, but close down. No, it was a month later. March. Um, April? Probably April ish. So, yeah. He had to literally reinvent himself for it to get to that point. Vice, a person like Rusev, I mean, he had to reinvent it. R- Rusev Day, shit. <laughs> Rusev Day was never over because of Rusev. It was over because of Aiden English. And nobody could tell me differently. Oh, look at that. Cena jumping off a pod. What? Told you, man, this dude. Dude had it. But this was. He had. I'm trying to think. When was Daniel Bryan uh, Cena? That was 2014 or 2015? Daniel Bryan Cena was 2013. SummerSlam 2013. Which, I mean, I guess Cena props now because Solo beat the brakes off his ass and then (laughs) Theory beat him and it didn't do nothing with him. Oh, nope. Give me that. Uh, Boom. And this was it. This was it. One, two, 
three, and that was when they knew. We'll this is when they knew Bray was going to win. And I was in this house. The roof was blowed off at this point. Because we knew it was like, holy shit. And as you can see, everybody's like, yes, 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 yes. We didn't know we were cheering ourselves into a burning fire one month later. <laughs> Which is nuts to say when you think hindsight. And then, oh my God, this is when they start those replays. Oh man. Oh man. I'm listening tomorrow, dude. I could, oh, all day, all day. You're going to have a new champion. I don't think that's a title, but that was a one-on-one match we ever got, was it? What, Zeno Styles? No. No, Wyatt and AJ. Oh, Wyatt and Styles? No. Oh, no. This is about as close as you got. Yeah. I mean, that's a match that should have happened. Personally. Definitely. Bias here. Bias Bi- kicking in. But, I mean, uh, what else can you do, right? And then, these met, I mean, and then to go figure, this was like the last Elimination Chamber match in which... That are that was just the only male format because the next year was the Elimination Chamber women's format in Las Vegas of all places. This is an odd Elimination Chamber event to say the least because it was the uh, uh, usually there were two on a, a card from 2010 to. 2017, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I think this is when they first introduced... Did they introduce... No, Fastlane was... I think this was when they introduced Fastlane. Fastlane was... Yeah, I think there was a Fastlane already. So they didn't this roll like... off that one year. Um, the year prior to this. So, think this through. So, the shield, you had, like, seven. Oh. And we lost Calico. And now he's back. Seth was fighting. There you go, see? Seth was about to fight Triple H at this time. There's a lot of, I mean, I remember this. But WrestleMania in Orlando should never happen again. <laughs> There's no goddamn way it should happen in Orlando. Because, <clears throat> bro, when I say that stadium is in a sketch part of town, it is literally the sketch part of town. <laughs> that is like we were just. Tra- yeah, we were trying to find parking, and all there was was a bunch of people's houses trying to get us to park in their yard. Bam! 450. Springboard 450. I thought you were going to say that they were charging you 450. <laughs> I mean, they might as well have the way that they were going. Oh, my goodness. And we ended up parking at a... Um, What the hell did they call it? It was the... Um, a baseball parking lot. That's exactly... See, I still remember this shit. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm telling you, man, it was a trip. Um... Look at AJ Styles having a great match with Bray Wyatt. 
Like this myth, like for instance, this year for um, elimination chamber, the, the elimination chamber match was over maybe the next minute after the last participant came out. Hold on, here it goes. One, two, three, and the roof blew off. Oh my clean, goodness! Clean in the in the middle. And caught him too. Which it's is unusual just... because heels don't win clean in the in the middle. Well, it was it was iffy with this one. That's to say the least. I will say that it was it was iffy. That is true. I still remember. It was like, oh, I still remember this. I was looking down. I have probably snapped like 30,000 pictures because everyone was freaking happy finally that he finally got it. You know, funny story I'll tell you right here. Um, you know, I have replica championship titles um, and I have a replica world championship. And my rule when it comes to who gets to sign my championship is you must have won the world championship to sign the world championship belt. I saw Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 31 um, in um, San Francisco. I told him, you know, I usually I don't let people that didn't win the championship sign my championship, but I truly believe that you will be WWE champion and down the line. So I'm I'm getting it done now. And um he was somewhat taken aback by that as well. Like, well <laughs> thank you for believing in me in me. So that was a cool mm. little moment um then. So to see him do it what, like two years later? Um, bit of sweet, I would say. You know what? The funny part is that I had and look at at this that part. My, That's a yeah, that movie. visual was banana. <clears throat> and then it comes out Orton, which is weird because it was like he was the Royal Rumble winner. And I, if I remembered right, they didn't have this uh, winner gets to choose. And that they, it was like if you were in that brand, you were kind of stuck to the brand. Right? I don't remember that. Because Orton won, but he didn't yeah. pick. He didn't pick anybody. He didn't pick anybody until it was time to pick. But we kind of all knew where it was leading. True. Man, that's crazy. You had a fun... My Bray Wyatt story was I saw him. He was by... And it was funny because I'm, I'm giving myself away with how old I was with these VIPs. So back then, you used to be able to get access and access had the VIPs. And at one point, Randy Orton was 50 bucks. I should have jumped on it. And I didn't. But anyway... But one of my tickets was Bray Wyatt because I had at that point I think that year I spent the most on VIP tickets ever. I had AJ Styles, Roman Reigns, uh, Bray Wyatt, I Nakamura. I was all in, right? Um, but I met Bray Wyatt and he was probably I think the second person to sign my title. The first was Sheamus at thirty two. And he was the second at 33. And I have the photo, uh, the digital photo, the pro photo. And I just like, man. And he was just so cool. And he was like, thank you, brother. It was cool. And it was just nice to chat with him and tell him, like, bro, I kind of knew you'd be here. Because I had him at 30. I met him at 30. And he was big then. But, and that's another story, too, at WrestleMania 30. Because we were at... um, access and he was in the free line and that line was crowded and 
he didn't have to and this and at this time this was the whole Wyatt family. So he didn't have to stay. They all stayed and made sure everyone got an autograph at least minimum. So I have him autographed in my encyclopedia with him and Luke Harper. So I got Luke Harper, Rowan and Bray all in a triangular in my book and then Bray Wyatt is signed my WWE title. Yeah. And, um, you know, even prior to that, I, I saw uh, Bray Wyatt at uh, uh, right before the Ring of Fire match with Kane. So, um, you know, all awesome memories with an awesome individual. I'm glad we got to, you know, do a little watch along of his only WWE title run. So, um, you know, it may not have been long, but he is in the history books. And this, I still remember it, man. Arizona, when they left, they were, like, usually, you know, a crowd. You could tell when a crowd is like, man, fuck, right? Or hell yeah. That crowd was all over it. They were all on it. Oh, yeah. And I don't, and I don't blame them. Don't blame him at all, because that that th- that was the guy that people were wanting to have that title for the longest, and it was just like hurdle after hurdle after hurdle after hurdle after hurdle and for him to finally break it. It was just awesome. Now, only if WrestleMania Dirty Tree didn't happen. <laughs> Um, that will conclude our coverage of WWE Elimination Chamber. Um, thank you for listening. If you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, but on YouTube and Castbox. This was sponsored by Rogue Energy and Tail One Coffee. Um, join us tomorrow as we interview Jeremy Prophet. Um, Wednesday as we interview, um, Godfather of Skull, and then obviously on Saturday, so on Saturday. Um, and you can follow the show, uh, the show at Wrestling with E, but on X, Instagram for information on who we're interviewing, when we're interviewing them, links to those interviews and so much more. Follow me personally at JamesJ993. Welcome to follow Coleco. I am Coleco. WrestleMania 40 is right around the corner. So happy for four years. For Coleco Yachts and Scooter Dust, I'm James J, and this has been Wrestling with Entertainment. Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling with Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys, we appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.